I'm CT. When I'm not busy being Arrow the podcaster, I live in the real world. I mean, everybody has to have a real job, right? Mine is CS, customer service. You know, solutions, relationships, while keeping my team motivated and pumped up with a constant connection with each and every person who has chosen to step into our location. Episode number 107, On Tour, Total Eclipse, and Shepherd's Pie. This is CTCS. Transition walk. Well, kind of, sort of. It's the day before the two days that I normally go into the grocery store, but uh, I've got the next two days off because live stage, baby. Going to be on that live stage doing incredible music. Uh, boy, tomorrow's performance is a six-hour outdoor performance, and then Friday will be a uh, an evening celebration. So looking forward to being on that stage for two nights in a row. Can't tell you what the body's going to feel like on Saturday morning, though. So it'll only be two days out of the four. Performance day. It's just after 6 a.m. Loading up the equipment for an outdoor performance. It's raining. Um, been here before. We've been doing this since 1992. Uh, they say the rain will be done by maybe 9 o'clock. We don't start playing till 11. So uh, that, that's cool that, that it's supposed to stop raining, but the ground's going to be wet. Where are they going to put us? That's always a fear when you hear the music. Uh, I've been shocked many times. Uh, is today going to be one of those days to add to the book? Transition walk. Day number two, out on the road. Had that big performance yesterday outside. Man, it rained in the very beginning. We did get some equipment rained on. And then the uh, the sun broke. And then what happened was is that the winds really started picking up and it blew over one of our speakers. So uh, that's always a, a dangerous thing to look at. Got another live performance tonight. The good news is it's indoors. Uh, it's going to be a late one, though. So And then I'll get back to see us tomorrow. But two days out on the road. We're on tour right now. We've got a lot of performances to do over the next three weeks. Transition walk. In the CTCS world, this would be day number three out of four. My God, last night was so incredible. Uh, being on that stage, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a room full of a, a lot of people from New York. New Yorkers love to party. They love to party hard. They have their way of partying, where when they come down to visit in the South, they always go, man, we do it differently in New York. Last night was one of those nights where I was like, I got some compliments from the people from New York that I knew what I was doing. Yeah, now if I can only figure out what I'm doing in CS. I'm taking this transition walk through this beautiful forest in South Charlotte a little bit later than normal because at this point in time, we're about maybe six or seven minutes away from the eclipse taking place. Sadly, we've got gray skies. The ground is wet from a fall rain, but uh, I still want to be out here in the forest because the last time that I was part of an eclipse, it got so quiet in the forest for those moments when things just kind of went into a shadowed state. So I want to find out uh, what's going to happen today, even with the, the gray skies above. The meteorologist said that this part of the world would uh, go through the eclipse at about 11.50. We're getting very close to it. As Jazzy and I walk through this forest, it's really quiet. I mean, I saw one squirrel just a few seconds ago, but there are no birds in flight. You don't even hear the birds even singing. So it's really super quiet inside this forest right now. It's 11.51. According to the meteorologist, we should be... Having the experience... Oh, Jesus, my God, the sun is right above me. Holy crap. Hold on, I gotta get my glasses on. For some stinking reason, I am seeing it right now on a cloudy, rainy day. Absolutely, without a doubt, man. That eclipse is playing with everybody's emotions, man. It's like nobody wants to be friendly with anybody. Words of accusations and finger pointing and... God, I already felt like crap when I came in into a cesspool of emotion. I'm sure we're no different than any other business. You can have an emotional roll call. We've got Robert, who's on number six, complained about how he's sick and tired of people asking him to watch their carts while they uh, go to the bathroom. you got Ty at the other end on number one, who just basically never wants to show up. But she's here, and she's going to do whatever she can to get by. But don't look for a smile, because it's not going to happen. And, you know, then you've even got uh, you know other people on the team that are displaying their emotions in a way that it's like, okay, so uh, we're not getting along today. Maybe I shouldn't be even talking about this on CTCS. Maybe this should be the episode that should never air. Ooh. Jesus. It's not just the employees that are going through this this mental situation that we're currently in today. Don't record this stuff, dude. It's like you're sucking in all the bad energy. Older gentleman claims he's been coming to the store since the 1960s, and uh, he's really bitching up a storm because he feels that when we have things that are half on, it's not supposed to be the price that he once paid back in 1972. Half off means I'm going to save some money here. But man, you got to look at today's prices and realize what is half off these days? It's still a bank loan away is what it is. And now the pet peeve of the week. 
when people come up to do a Western Union to receive money, and they said, I'm going to be right back. Okay, seven minutes have gone by. I've got it ready to go. I need the phone number so I can continue on, and uh, they're not here. That's uh, wh- Why? Why did you even come up here if you're not even ready? We've got reports of a very intoxicated young lady uh, who is in front of our store right now picking up our pumpkins, and who, which are in a big box out near the parking lot, and she is throwing them in the street, making sure that they break all over the place. We've called the police uh, because this this is uh, beyond our, our control. You can't you can't stop this because we can't do anything about it because she's outside. But she's uh, there. She goes again. Okay, that's uh, which one? Is that four? That's four pumpkins now. Uh, this has got to stop. Well, ain't that the shit? I'm not the shits, but ain't that the shit? You know, I talked all day today about how it felt like everything was just caving in around us. And I challenged myself not to talk about it, don't even record, don't do anything. And so earlier today, uh, Anita and her son always come into the store. They're, they're, They're just masters at saving money. And what happened was, is that today he was buying a bunch of things, and he says, yeah, my mom's been asking for some shepherd's pie. Well, Tiana and I, for the past couple of weeks, that's all we talked about is is shepherd's pie. And what did we do? As I'm leaving the store, he walks in with these three amazing tubs full of shepherd's pie. Community, baby. Community. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a great way to end a very, very bad day. Transition walk, day number four. It's actually day number two, but, you know, I had the DJ performances uh, on Thursday and Friday. And it's cold as hell out here today. This is what fall is all about. But we're in the forest on the day after the eclipse and uh, with a clearer, more positive mind. Because I got my Jesus on. Man, I need to get my Jesus on on a Thursday or a Friday so that when I go into a weekend, I got the power to know who my community is and how I can get up and around situations that I know I can't win. In fact, my Sabinim used to tell me all the time in martial arts, he says, the situation that is troubling you right now, yeah, can you control it? No. Move on. If you can't control it, move on. Is it right to start the day off with a pet peeve, or is that being negative? I'm going to do it anyway. Pet peeve of the day. People who can't get off the phone. You're checking them out. You're sending their food across the little beeper. Money is adding up. You don't get a hello. You don't get a nod. You ask them a question. They don't. They don't respond. They're on that phone. And they're just looking at it as if it's like an addiction. It's like they can't break free of it. Pet peeve of the day. How'd you like your shepherd's pie? It was actually really good. It was. It was, it was did I, you heat it up when you got home? I heated it up and I did add some teal seasoning, yeah. but it was still good. It was really good. Yeah, because, I mean, what did you like about it? I like the mashed potato part. Yeah. That is exactly yeah. what I was going to say. The mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes pulled it together. We've been without our general manager now for a month, and there's no sign of a replacement. We've got an injured manager on duty. We also have a manager on duty that's on vacation. So we're really, with one manager on duty, we're bringing other people in from other stores. This guy that's here with us tonight uh, traveled like 50-some miles to get here just to help us out. But it's uh, it's very difficult. I mean, it's it's like playing a different field every day because you don't know what manager on duty is going to be here, and each one of them have their own set of rules and styles. Our guest has about $323 of groceries and a big, big basket full. And they want us to type in the EBT number. You can't do that. Not at this store. The, your EBT card, it's got to go down that strip. If it doesn't go down that strip, uh, you can't get the food. And so it was so funny. And she goes, hey, I put in a lot of time to, eat, to gather that food. And, and I know you guys are going to put it back. Can I at least have the sandwich for free? No, no, that's just not going to happen. So remember, if your EBT card is a little roughed up, get a new one. Not every store in our chain is the same. There are some that uh, do not have their customer service people ever work a register because you need people up in customer service. You can have them bag. You can have them do other things around the store, maybe do some putbacks here and there. But uh, but here at this store, uh, you're on that register and you're busting serious tail. So when you jumped into that shepherd's pie, what did you expect? I expected... Honestly, since it was from like a random person, yeah, yeah, I didn't expect it to be good at all. Yeah, it smelled amazing, which made me think, "Oh, this is about to be so bad." <laughs> yeah, see, in radio, we don't we didn't eat anything from listeners because mm-hmm. you don't eat listeners. You don't know if it's poisoned or yeah. anything like that. That's exactly what I was thinking. Of, but I was like, honestly, the way it smells, I risk it. It's the case of the missing smartphone. It's an Apple phone, and he's been scouring the store. Uh, for about 35 minutes saying that the phone is here because it's got that automatic locator 
And, uh, I mean, it, it shows that it's clearly here. His ringer is not on, and nobody has turned it in, but he doesn't know where he's dropped it at. So he's calm about it. You can also tell that he's getting upset. You see, the store is in a shopping center. So basically, I'm, I'm seeing the map, and it looks like that, you know, it's, it's here at 4101. But the thing is, is that uh, um, he, he still feels it's here in the store. And uh, uh, so he uh, went outside for a little bit because I asked him, I said, do you sure you didn't lose it outside? He says, I never even thought about that. I said, yeah, did it fall out of your bags or out of your pocket while you were getting into the car? Because sometimes my phone falls out when that happens. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm such a dork as it is. So, so uh, he's going to go outside and see if, he, if it's out there. The case of the missing iPhone has been solved. And what happened was is that he had dropped it outside by this restaurant that uh, uh, is called the, the Park Road Soda Shop. And somebody had taken it inside the soda shop. And he just happened to go in there and, and ask, did anybody turn in a phone? Sure enough. But, you know, it's not reliable, those, those smartphone locators. You know, sure, it, it was in this area, but, you know... It, uh, he, he didn't leave it in our store, but he made a pretty good scene about it. Another one of those moments where it's, whoa, I didn't think I was so old. Chance, he's 18. He's on register number one. Turns around to me on register number two. And he goes, CT, CT, oh my God, there's something wrong with this can of soup. I looked at it and I said, what, what, what's the problem? I thought that they all came with that little flip-flop thing where you just kind of pull back and the top just comes off. No, dude, this is the old-fashioned kind. This is the kind where you have to use a can opener to open it up. He goes, I've never seen that before. Whoa, I guess I'm just that old. Just got word here at the store that we've lost uh, a great, a great from the 1970s, a show called Three's Company. And uh, she's been my guest on my, on my podcast several different times because she knows that I, I love to talk about eating clean and, uh, and living a clean life. Uh, we lost Suzanne Summers. That's, that's a tough one, very tough one, because I got to know her just a little bit. Because when we would get on the phone, we never got off the phone until one of us just finally says, we got to go. Well, that's it. Another edition of CTCS on tour, the eclipse and shepherd's pie. Take the time to get to know those that are in a grocery store, those that stock, those that are in the bakery, even shake the hand of the general manager. They're hard workers in there. There's a lot of drama, a lot of hidden stories, but they're real people living a real life. Thank you for listening to CTCS.